when asked if he was in favor of cutting arts funding during the war, Winston Churchill replied with, then what are we fighting for? What are we fighting for? Jenny. Every day, Jenny does a double check just to make sure there aren't any bed bugs stuck to her clothes. She can't stand to die from that kind of embarrassment again. She quickly eats the bounce breakfast of a glass of water and nervous butterflies. That girl was born doing chin-ups off the poverty line, but she calls them an exercise in optimism. Jenny's mother is a disappearing act she hasn't seen in months. Jenny's father is illiterate, but learned how to spell incarceration through definition. Jenny's sister, inherited bipolar disorder and full-time custody of her siblings. You'd swear the two of them had just robbed a casino with the amount of chips on their shoulders. Man. Sometimes life just isn't fair. Jenny doesn't need another social worker to walk in and out of her life. What that girl needs is access to a music room for a 12-year-old. She has a voice that could bring Elvis to his knees, breathe color into black and white movies. She does it so naturally, the birds get jealous, but she gets shh more times than she gets encouraged because her humming is cited as housefly and not hummingbird in the classroom. She's learning to abandon her gift like a child in a basket every time she succumbs to the weight of textbooks. Funny. I thought spines were supposed to keep your chin up. Michael. Michael was born with more energy than the Energizer Bunny marching band parade playing Flight of the Bumblebee at 10 times the speed. He loves dinosaurs, wants to have a collection of red bicycles, and his mother just realized he put his pants on backwards every day. Michael eats a balanced breakfast of regurgitated cognitive behavioral therapy and Adderall, hops on the school bus and shrinks like a drying sponge trying to take itself out of sight. Michael was taught that spectrum means light, but his spectrum diagnosis makes him feel like he belongs in the shadows, back of class, out of sight, out of mind, Michael does not need a higher dosage. What that boy needs is an art room. He can do figure skaters on canvas with a flick of his wrist, turn wet clay into marble statues, turn graphite into real life. But his doodles are considered an act of tax evasion in the land of paying attention. So he gets told to sit and to focus. He becomes a live wire, spitting sparks and sitting restless. He is proof that you cannot treat a masterpiece like a paint by number and expect the same results. Stacy. Stacy is a balancing act between giving up and pushing through. She wears a heart that feels like cement shoes and lives with a brain that feels like a knife fight every day. Stacy eats a balanced breakfast of half an apple cut in three quarters. No skin, no core. When your brain is at war with itself, the body becomes the battleground and eating disorders have always been about control. When it comes to food for thought though, she puts so much poetry in her journal, the Mona Lisa could read it, lose face and shed a tear. Stacy does not need another guidance counselor to tell her what she is doing is wrong. What she needs is an audience, a chance to read what she has written in her journal, to have people bear witness to her struggle, to have them come up to her afterwards and say thank you for making me feel less alone. Michael, Jenny, and Stacy are three kids you would find in the same classroom. Times that by 10 and you have 30 individual experiences all sitting in the same class teachers. We're never taught how to put on a superhero cape, but they do it anyways, as best they can with what they have. It is a tough job making sure that every Icarus does not fly too close to the sun, replacing blisters with capacity building. I have seen it for myself. I've watched students dressed as shadows emerge hibiscus flowers the moment they were given an avenue of expression. I have seen the most troublesome storms quell their pain the moment they were given a chance to talk. I have seen rainbows emerge from storm clouds, all because of the arts. When asked if he was in favor of cutting arts funding during the war, Winston Churchill replied with, then what are we fighting for? It's not so much a question of what we fight for, but for who.